Ahead. Great to see you. Great to see you, Ross. Welcome to MIT. Well, as a professor of nanotechnology here at MIT, I am super excited to talk to you about the future of solar. Well, I am super excited to have you here so I can tell you what we spent the last decade working on to get us to what we think is going to be the new age of solar technology. Can we take a look? Yeah, it's in here. Come right. along. So what are the limitations that are really affecting the widespread adoption of solar? Solar is incredible. Um, if you look at year after year, the growth in the solar installations is about 20% more than the year before. About 3% of the world's electricity is provided by solar cells. Solar is being adopted broadly. However, it could be adopted even more broadly if we can rethink it. Gosh, I mean, our electricity made by solar cells are cheaper than any other form of generating electricity. Right. Yet, it's not everywhere. Well, what's missing? I still need to install it, which means I need concrete or aluminum framing on my roof. I might need to reinforce my roof. All of those are obstacles. We can accelerate it by changing the format of the cell, by making it lighter, by making it invisible, and hence integratable in everyday environment without affecting the aesthetics of the space we're in. So if you had a crystal ball and you could look out 5, 10, or even 15 years into the future, what does the solar industry look like? I think new types of solar cells will be on the market that we right now do not even imagine could be made. Dramatic advancements are on the horizon. We're going to make solar cells that don't weigh very much at all. So deployment of them on top of your roof could be as simple as unrolling a carpet and stapling it to the roof with a plug coming from the side that you can then plug into your house. Maybe your windows will actually be turned into solar cells. Transparent glass. They'll look exactly like your window they will not absorb any visible light, but they will catch infrared radiation that is plentiful coming from the sun. A window that generates electricity? That has my attention. Do you want to see one? I'd love to. So, Ross, this is a solar cell. Uh, it looks like a window. <laughs> it is, except it happens to have a thin film that absorbs infrared radiation and converts it into electricity. Wow. Now, the way it starts is you go in the lab, you take a little piece of glass and you make one of these. So that little half inch by half inch piece there? Is the very first sample that we can start imagining how do you make something bigger. Okay. If it works, you have enough confidence to go to this. This is an actual working demo. And when I say working, meaning shine some sunlight on it or even diffuse light. So the sunlight is being absorbed by the material, generating electricity that's then running the motor you're holding in your hands. That is so cool. <laughs> yes. But it turns out that although these windows are pretty awesome, they have quite a bit of heft to them. Okay. Yep. So the question was, is there a way to reduce the weight? And one way to do it is to take a piece of glass and simply paint it with your active material by removing the piece of silicon that was there before. That's still, still glass, still brittle. Yeah. How about we go to this? A piece of plastic. Now we're talking. Flexible, easy to use. Still, most of the weight is in a piece of plastic because it's only a micron thick film on top that is solar active, but not good enough. Hence, this technology. Even lighter and more flexible. The technology is made on a piece of fabric using a lamination process of an active material, giving us these extremely light formats, 120 times less weight per meter squared than silicon. Wow. And just conceived. Actually, this is one of the very first demonstrations uh, demonstrated ever. What we now desire to do is take that idea and scale it to this. <laughs> so get a fabric version, but in this larger form factor. This plastic version is commercially available. Um, it does come in this heavier format. We can dramatically reduce the weight and use the knowledge of how to make them this big. That's the present step. Let's step in the lab. The first lab we're visiting is called the Growth Lab. This is where Vlad and his team create their initial prototypes. So this tool here that we're going to have a look at is called the sputter deposition tool. In the sputter deposition tool, solar cells are transferred to a substrate, in this case, a piece of glass. And that allows us to test it and evaluate whether that material can actually be turned into a technology. That purple light indicates plasma striking the glass, which is how the solar material is transferred to the glass. Thank you, Myron. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Thank sure. you. Down the hall, we enter the optics lab. This is where the prototypes are examined under powerful microscopes to evaluate how well the solar cells will perform. 
we can actually see all that microscale and nanoscale features in this computer over here. Now at this scale, the nanoscale, there are always deformities, which under the microscope appear as differences in color. See the different shades of gray? The more uniform the color, the more efficient the solar cell. The team at MIT is trying to minimize these deformities so they can maximize efficiency before the cells are printed on larger pieces of glass, plastic, or fabric. The next step is taking this and making it to a real handheld device. To do that, we need to step into the clean room. Okay. Thank you, Roberto. No problem. Thank you. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Welcome to the clean room. Wow. Here, they use a variety of tools to scale up the larger prototypes. But the coolest of all these tools to make a really good solar cell is the slot die coater. And if you would like to use that machine to make the most amazing solar cells, you would ask Rich, the world expert in using slot die coater for printing of active solar films. All right. Rich, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. So this is a slot die coater. You can think of it a lot like the industrial version of the inkjet printer you might have at home. Okay. What it does is it takes material and slots it over any sort of substrate of your choosing. Okay. And what are we actually printing on today? Today we're printing on a very thin piece of plastic. This is PET. Uh, you might see it in water bottles. Okay. Uh, it's ultimately very thin and could one day become kind of the, the form factor of next generation solar cells. So this tool takes that small scale that you saw earlier and scales it up and proofs it for real manufacturing and out comes a solar active material. Look at that. I mean, that's instantaneous. It prints and then it almost immediately dries. Wow, I mean, in a matter of seconds, you can actually screen print a flexible solar cell. That is really, really cool. What's the timeline like from concept to commercialization? Well, it took five years of my PhD to go from that small scale you saw earlier to this. And then from this, five years more, it will make it bigger and you can have the very first ones. Well, thank you. For a million people to have it, give us a little more time. So we need to scale bigger machines. Another five years and we'll be there. All right, 10 to 15 years, well worth the wait. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Bye. Well, Vlad, thank you so much for the tour. Thank Pleasure, great. come back anytime. Future's bright, keep doing your thing. Thank you, my friend. Take See care. You. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.